And this is funny. The drive-bys don't know what to do. They don't know which story to lose their minds over first today. Bannon talking to Mueller or Trump's physical and the fact that he's in better shape than 90% of the media. He's going to outlive 90% of the media, really ticks them off. They don't know what to focus on first. So they'll always come down on what do they think will be the easiest path to destroying Trump. And since the health news happened before the Bannon news today, they'll probably go with Bannon. So we will uh, we'll spend adequate time on that. Greetings, folks. Such a delight to have you here with us today. I got a note from what he said today, but this is really a slow news day, Rush. It's the first slow news day that I can recall since um, a long time. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I have more here than I'm ever going to be able to get to. Even a yeoman effort, even if I assign myself no more than 90 seconds per story, I don't have enough time to get to everything. Here's the phone number if you want to join us, 800-282-2882, and the email address, ilrushbo at eibnet.us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the childish display, the childish exposition and behavior of the drive-by media yesterday once again has proven me right. The, the bizarre questions... The unhinged, childish, so transparently desirous questions from our drive-by media regarding the health of President Trump has proved something. And interestingly enough, it's something that I highlighted yesterday. They believe this. Now, I know a lot of you think that the media is just hitting on things to try to trip Trump up or to convince Trump voters that he's nuts and they say all these outrageous things. And like I told the audience at the Media Research Center Gala that I keynote addressed back last fall, the danger here is that while they are actors, they do believe this stuff, folks. And their believability transfers to some of the brain-dead members of their audiences. The media believes. They're not just trying to create the illusion. The media believes that Donald Trump is not fit to be president. The media believes he is in the early onset stages of either Alzheimer's or dementia. They believe that he is mentally teetering on the edge and with a gentle nudge daily from them that they can send him over it. They believe he can't read. They believe he literally sits on his bed in the residence, scarfing down quarter pounders with cheese and double orders of fries. They believe that. It is not just a, a caricature or picture that they create. They believe it. Whatever anybody in the White House, whatever any source they have leaks about Trump with crazy, incomprehensible behavior, they believe it. I'm convinced that they believe that Donald Trump ordered prostitutes to show up at his hotel room in Moscow and have them urinate on the bed and point it out right there. This is where Michelle and Obama were sleeping, and this is where they did it. So I want, I want you to urinate right there. I am convinced they believe that happened. They believe that because he eats Big Macs and quarter pounders with cheese and maybe even double quarter pounders with cheese and extra-large order of fries, they believe that he's going to die. Tomorrow, next week, hopefully tonight, maybe next month, they believe that anybody who eats cheeseburgers and fries is going to die, in addition to the fact that they are polluting the planet and destroying the climate. They believe they're sick fantasies. There's no way these people could act as stupid and dumb and childish for an entire hour as they did yesterday if they didn't believe it. 
if they didn't hope it, if they hadn't invested in it, they believe all of these sick fantasies that they conjure up. And this is why they often confuse their opinions with being facts. They mistake their fantasies for being truth. Without evidence, without reading, they believed Obamacare would do everything Obama promised. And they still do. They believed that Obamacare would lower premiums. They believed that Obamacare would let you keep your doctor. They believed that Obamacare was the answer to American health care, and they still do. They were not interested in Obama's history of blowing weed. They were not interested in Obama's drug history whatsoever. They were not worried when Obama went out, snuck out, away from Muchel My Bell. What, what do you go to, Five Guys Hamburger Joint? They weren't worried that Obama was going to die when he had burgers and fries. They thought it was cool that he snuck out and even uh, evaded them until they caught up. They believe that all of these massive, historic, Record cold snaps prove global warming. They believe this stuff. They believe that massive corporate tax cuts hurts employees. Despite seeing widespread bonuses and wage increases, they believe all of this that they are reporting. That's the difference. Many people on our side think they're lying. Well, they are, but, but, but they're not misrepresenting their own true beliefs. The reason they are able to stay this intensely focused is they believe all of this stuff. They believe the election was stolen. They believe Donald Trump worked with Vladimir Putin and a bunch of Russian honeypots to steal the election. They aren't just saying it to try to destroy Trump. They believe it. The reporters and reporterettes at the New York Times and CNN and the Washington Post or wherever else, they believe it. That is the difference. They believe Donald Trump is on the verge of Alzheimer's insanity and death. They believe the doctor lied in reporting Trump's health statistics. They think that Trump is lying about his height, that he's not 6'3", that he's really only 6'2". And you know why that one inch makes a difference? Well, because... If he's really 6'2 and not 6'3, his weight means that he is obese. No, I'm not kidding. He's not 6'3, he's 6'2, and he got the White House doctor to lie for him. If he was really only 6'2 and had the, what do you weigh, 239, is that the weight? That would make him obese. Whereas at 6'3, he's not obese, he's just overweight. And obese means he's slovenly and irresponsible and is a slob and is going to die. So what we're watching here, with all due respect extended to that wacko senator from Arizona, Jeff Flake, the media is the clown show. It is the media unfit this current crop is entirely unfit to discharge their constitutional duties. Well, we have to say it that way because they're given constitutional recognition in the First Amendment. You know a Republican is losing his mind when he goes to the floor of the United States Senate and praises the media and calls them the truth squad in an effort to rip Donald Trump as trying to destroy the truth and American institutions. These people, this current crop of drive-by reporters are unfit. They are unstable. 
I mean, if, if all it was was that they're just partisan, if they're just a usual, ordinary, everyday, standard leftist partisans, that'd be one thing. That would be tolerable. But this is way beyond partisanship. And this is way beyond bias. We're dealing with unhinged instability. Jim Acosta yesterday had to be thrown out of where they were, they Roosevelt rumor, and Trump shut him down with one word, out! So yesterday, Acosta said, I never thought this could happen anywhere but an authoritarian country. Today, Jeff Flake compared Donald Trump to Stalin. That's right, Jeff Flake compared Donald Trump to Joseph Stalin, who was a mass murderer in the old Soviet Union. The true Stalinists today are the American left. Stalinist defined as someone who demands that you think as they do and love it. Demands that you agree with them and love it and love them. They will brook no discord and they will accept no intolerance. You believe them or you will be destroyed. The media, this current crop, and by the way, not all of them, obviously, but the vast majority of the White House press corps and the, you know, the big names at cable news, they are actually what they accuse Trump of being. They are unfit for their jobs. They're not reporting the news. They're not trying to find the truth. They already think they know it. They're actors. See where Cory Booker wanted to get in on some of that yesterday? I Did you see that picture with his hands up? I think he's doing Al Franken impersonation with that picture. All we needed was Leanne Tweeden in that photo to close the loop. Did you see that? He's got his hands up there just like Franken in that picture aboard the C-130 on the way back from the, uh, I guess, Afghanistan. You talk about unhinged. But Booker was acting... Because he's running for something, trying to get noticed, trying to accept the praise, support of the unhinged mainstream left. What happened in Hawaii? You know, I think people ask me frequently, what, what do you mean by drive-by media? Because I don't define it very much. I think it's self-explanatory. What's a drive-by shooter? You're riding along. You're minding your own business. Somebody pulls up next to you and unloads on you. A mess is created. You're injured, you're killed, or whatever. What's a drive-by shooter that just keeps rolling, heading on down the highway, waiting for the next chance to do it again, while behind him there's a giant mess and a bunch of people hurt and injured that needs to be cleaned up. That's the drive-by media. The drive-by media and the Russia collaboration, the drive-by media and Trump's health, the drive-by media and take your pick, the drive-by media and Trump is a racist. The drive-by media and Trump and the s-hole story. Drive-by media, it's just pull up to a story, raise hell, cause havoc, throw everybody upside down, and then head on down the highway and do it with the next story, leaving behind you a giant mess for adults to fix and clean up. What happened in Hawaii is a perfect metaphor for how the media operates. They press panic buttons needlessly. They cause millions of people abject fear, in some cases for their lives. The media creates discord, instability, unrest. They cause people to be obsessed in pessimism and negativism. And then after it's discovered that there is no impending disaster, there are no repercussions. They're on the road, down the road, to do it all over again. Nobody gets fired. Nobody gets reprimanded. And very rarely are corrections ever substantially made. Just a brief pause before pushing the next nuclear warning button again. What happened in Hawaii with the emergency management guy that... <laughs> hit the wrong button twice, and they didn't tell anybody for a half hour. Perfect metaphor for how the drive-by media supposedly covers the news. 
This is the same drive-by media that never batted an eye when Bill Clinton refused to release his medical records, even though STDs and venereal diseases and the drugs used to combat them can affect one's mind. But they were not interested in it, despite everything they knew. They covered for Bill Clinton not releasing his medical records, saying it wasn't important that his approval ratings were sky high. The American people didn't care. Seems like it was only yesterday the drive-bys are talking about the Michael Wolf book. And how the Wolf book claims some insiders described Trump as childish and childlike. Well, what we had yesterday in the White House briefing room was nothing more than romper room without a teacher. The drive-by media as the kids playing in the sandbox not getting their toys and not getting their lunches and not getting recess. This is the same media that never questioned Hillary Clinton when she could barely stand up. The same media that never questioned Hillary Clinton when she collapsed, trying to get into a bus to make a fast getaway for almost having collapsed at a 9-11 ceremony. The same media that never asked Hillary about her supposed concussions. The same media that never questioned when she was wearing those thick Coke bottle glasses because of her double vision. They said it was actually double vision. It was to prevent seizures. The same media that never questioned when Hillary couldn't finish a single speech without a prolonged coughing fit. There was never any concern for Hillary Clinton's health, and we never had Sanjay Gupta or any other doctor on mainstream media telling us she's not well. But Sanjay Gupta of CNN fame yesterday said, after he heard the numbers that the White House doctor reported for Trump's cardiovascular system, the president has heart disease. Did you hear that? CNN, Sanjay Gupta. The president has heart disease. This is the same bunch of people now obsessed claiming Trump is dangerously overweight. The same people that want Oprah to be president. You figure it out. CNN had a had a panel. By the way, we've got an audio montage coming up. I, I would be playing it right now, but there are time constraints. We put together a montage of the White House press corps asking their ridiculous childlike questions about Trump's health and mental health yesterday. Uh, there was even a question, Dr. Dr. Jackson, is Donald Trump a drug addict? Here's a guy who's never smoked. He has never consumed adult beverages. He takes aspirin. He's not on any, I think there's a, a cholesterol medicine that he's got a prescription for, I recall it. But <laughs> no alcohol, no tobacco, no nothing. Meanwhile, a previous president was in a Jum gang. Proudly talked about it. CNN panel doubts doctor claims he's just a Trump fanboy. The Root, the Skip Gates website, did the White House fake Trump's physical results. They believe he's insane. They believe he's going to die. They believe it. That's why all this stuff they think is made up and faked. They believe it. You know, the White House doctor, his name is Ronnie Jackson. And this, he looks so familiar to me. You know, I was, I was at the White House a number of times during the administration of George W. Bush. And I met the White House doctor, and it's, and, and, and Dr. Jackson began his service as White House doctor under President Bush. And I know this was the first term that I was I had a chance to talk to him because the 2004 election, uh, we were discussing it and what it would mean if Bush won and what it would mean if Bush lost. He looks familiar. My, my memory is that he was one of the nicest, greatest, most outgoing people I had ever met. I was up there 
for I think it, it might have been it might have been one of the, we had lunch with Tony Snow in the uh, one of the ante rooms of the White House mess at Carl Rove and so forth. I don't remember because there are a number of those times. But I remember on the way out, uh, we're in the hallway. The, the, the White House physician's office is very near the elevator, takes you up to the residence. And somebody said, you really need to, to meet the White House doctor. He's a great guy. I had a great conversation with him. And I think it's, it's Dr. Jackson here. Unless he joined the administration in the second term. And even then, I, I, I think that, that that's, that's who I remember talking to. The, the reason I bring this up is that he made a point. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how, but integrity and, and honor are the, the coin of the realm for him. It's, it's, it's something of all the things I remember talking to him. It was his emphasis on, on integrity and honor and those characteristics being part of people who lead the country. And how he wouldn't be around if, if there were wide gaps in integrity and honor. He loved President Bush. He thought President Bush was one of the finest men and human beings he'd ever met. And many people who've met President Bush say that. Uh, even Democrats now, with all these years behind them and the water of all that under the bridge now, and this I was thinking about all this, and I'm listening to these reporters accuse this doctor of lying, accusing this doctor of making it up, accusing Trump of blackmailing the doctor or otherwise threatening the doctor to report things that were not true. And if it's the same guy I met, there is no way that doctor, he would resign. He would walk out of there if any president told him to lie, make it up, doctor the results misreport, whatever. The doctor I met would have walked out of there. But just, again, the allegation here, the reckless allegation, the, the willing desire to destroy a doctor's career and reputation, all in pursuit of getting rid of Donald Trump. These people are shameless. They obviously have not an iota's worth of compassion or respect. This doctor is just another person to be destroyed and sent packing on the road to getting rid of Trump. I mean, this is, this is serious stuff to accuse a White House doctor, any doctor, of lying about it and making it up, accusing the president of threatening if he didn't make it up. Now, I've often believed that people who make those kinds of allegations are actually people who do those things, who have experience doing those things, and that's why the allegation so easily rolls off their tongue. So here they are. I mean, look, at they're already participating in a totally made-up lie and hoax, and that is the Trump dossier. And I don't know whether they believe that dossier is real or whether they know it's a hoax. What I do know, they are relishing in passing it off as real. So they really believe, even though there isn't a scintilla, there isn't a shred of evidence that there was any collusion whatsoever, except between Democrats in Russia. Despite the fact there's no evidence, they wholeheartedly endorse it and believe it and think all kinds of cheating was going on. And then the same people come along and accuse the White House doctor of making it up and lying and the president being complicit in it. It produced this. We have about a minute and a half of a montage here of a bunch of reporters in the White House press corps asking some of the silliest, stupidest, most ridiculous questions about Trump's health. Can you explain to me how a guy who eats McDonald's and <laughs> fried chicks and all those Diet Cokes and who never exercises is in as good a shape as you say he's in? Can you assess the president's mental fitness for office? How much weight have you suggested the president lose? Cholesterol over 220. Do you hope to get it under 200? 
Are you yeah. ruling out things like early onset Alzheimer's? Are you looking at dementia? He does have heart disease. The 25th Amendment, a lot of people in the country have been talking about it. Do you believe he is fit for duty? It sounds like he has a sniffle. Do you have a life expectancy range for him? Is he limited to one strip of ice cream now? Is there anything you're keeping from us for privacy reasons? Are you sure. confident of his prostate health? Waist measurement for the president. His weight, I think he's at 239, right? It seems just shy of obesity. It's Dr. recommended that most baby boomers get screened for hepatitis C. Did you do a hep C test? Some of the president's friends have told reporters in the past that they think he's a germaphobe, that he washes his hands obsessively. Stroke concerns? When the president has his colonoscopy at the next fiscal, will he be sedated? Do you keep a tally of how much golf the U.S. president plays? Drug addiction? Does this president ask you about how he could follow his predecessor's example to be as fit as Barack Obama was? You believe this stuff, folks? Does this president ask you about how he could follow his predecessor's example to be as fit as Barack Hussein Obama was? They can't believe it. Folks, when I, when I say that, that they believe it, whoever got this 25th Amendment business going, you know, this has been out there. This has been a drive-by story for uh, many weeks now. And the thrust of it is, is that Trump is unstable. He's unfit. The lying, filled with errors Michael Wolf book suffices as evidence for these people that Trump is unfit, that he is mentally unstable, that he's an early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, and that the cabinet and several members of Congress need to get together and enforce the 25th Amendment, basically throw Trump out of office. Okay, they've been reporting that so long, it's now real. They believe it. It's, it's not just a prop. They believe it. And by the way, you know, the first question, explain to me how a guy who eats McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, all those Diet Cokes, explain to me how he's in as good a shape as he is. You can't, these, a lot of these guys in the media are millennials. They've grown up believing that McDonald's is destroying the planet. They have grown up believing that eating cheeseburgers is deadly. They have grown up believing that cow farts, methane, is destroying the ozone layer and promoting climate change. They have grown up believing this. Their school teachers have told them this. PSAs in media have told them this. They believe it. And so here comes a 71-year-old man who is in impeccable health who does everything they've been told not to do, and they can't reconcile it. It literally doesn't come to them. Donald Trump must be dead. Because they believe all of this poppycock that they have been taught about diet and the things that you eat and drink will kill you. And he's healthier than many of them are, and they just can't abide by it. They cannot deal with it, and they cannot accept it. Can you assess the president's mental fitness for office? Does he have heart disease? 25th Amendment, a lot of people in the country have been talking about. So what? Doesn't mean anything. Do you feel he's fit for duty? Sounds like he has the sniffles. You got a life expectancy range for him? And you heard the attempt here at getting at 239 pounds versus the height, and would that be obese or any of this? But, I mean, the, the, the childishness and, and the ignorance and the prejudice, you can see the, the, the education these people are the product of. And it's scary. And these are supposedly the best Journalism has to offer. These are the people with the top jobs, folks, and they are children. They're dangerously unqualified, incurious, fact absent, totally propagandized young kids. From the Daily Caller, journalists unable to accept results of Trump's physical exam. By the way, one of the big aspects of this was the cognizant exam and the white house doctor spent a lot of time explaining that trump is thoroughly cognizant he's aware he's coordinated there's no delayed 
uh, physiological reflex, mental actions whatsoever. He's he's operating at near 100% in all these measurements. And they simply can't believe it. And they think the guy is making it up. And, and they, and they want to know if Trump or why did you even do this? And the doctor said Trump ordered it because he knows there are people who are saying that he's behaving otherwise. And now the drive-bys are trying to say that the doctor who designed the cognizant test is from Lebanon. Well, Lebanon is a country supposedly Trump hates. And they think it's great irony. The cognitive test was created by a doctor from Lebanon and supposedly uh, who was a Lebanese immigrant to Canada. Trump's cognitive test created by a Lebanese immigrant to Canada. And it's a Washington Post story. They think they've got a killer point here. The man in question came to Canada as a legal refugee. Trump has not tried to stop all refugees from coming to the U.S. for asylum. They're trying to point out that Trump's a hypocrite, that the guy who created a test that Trump passed is a refugee and an immigrant to Canada. And if Trump had had his way, this guy would have never been able to do what he did. It's that asinine, childish, and absurd. Journalists unable to accept results of Trump's physical exam. Maggie Haberman, New York Times, said that Dr. Johnson, the White House physician, may have arbitrarily made Trump one inch taller so that he would not have an obese body mass index. She tweeted, remember that earlier physicals decades ago put Trump at 6'2". This physical has him at 6'3". It makes a difference on his BMI from overweight to obese. I, I, this is, it is, it is pathetic. These people are, uh, they, what was the word? They're, they're obsessed. And the poison with which they're obsessed is hatred. Hatred and resentment. But they are literally boiling with rage each and every day. I, I, I'm, I guess they expected these results to be deadly for Trump, maybe even in a literal sense. And they just, they can't accept what they heard. It's too good. It defies what they know to be true. And they're having trouble dealing with it. Now we get back continuing the uh, audio sound bites at number five and number six. And this is in regards to the president's health. And it's an observation that I, your beloved host, made back in 2016. It was on November 17th. And it was right after Trump was elected to the shock and dismay of uh, many. And I something that had always impressed me about Trump's energy level during the campaign, starting with that day in 2015 when he announced, he had all those rallies. He was doing, in some cases, three a day. There were a couple of days he did four. And they weren't just land and shake some hands and get back on the plane and fly to the next one. These are hour to hour and a half rallies with anywhere from fifteen to 25,000 people with a lot of autographs being signed afterwards. They were they were full fledged shows. And I, I I was I was amazed by it because the president's seventy years old. The candidate at the time is seventy years old. And remember on the other side we had Hillary Clinton who had to take two weeks off just to get ready for a debate. Hillary Clinton, the health news about her was not good. She was having seizures, having trouble standing up, wearing Coke bottle glasses. Media was not interested in her health problems whatsoever. And I made this observation uh, a few days after the election. You've heard of the word indefatigable. That's Trump. He's 71 years old, gets up at five in the morning. He sleeps four hours a night and he doesn't stop. Donald Trump has never smoked and he has never consumed adult beverages. Indefatigable. You see the root word there, fatigue. Je suis fatigué is how you would say it in French if you're tired. 
Trump is never tired. Remember the tweets that would start at 5 a.m. and the rally would end right before midnight? People say, when's the guy sleeping? It's four hours. I can relate. I get five to six. And I don't need that much. I only go to bed when the clock says 2 a.m. because I think if I don't, I never go to bed tired. Rarely. I mean, sometimes. But rarely am I dog tired when I go to bed. I have to force myself to do it. Discipline. So here's the White House doctor yesterday. This is, again, Dr. Ronnie Jackson speaking to the drive-by media, briefing them on the president's health. One of the things, being with the president on a day-to-day basis, that has been impressive to me, he has a lot of energy and a lot of stamina. I first noticed that, you know, we traveled, we did some overseas uh, travel last year, and uh, I was really surprised because I didn't know the president early on. We'd get these 14, 16-hour days, and the staff is just spent after a while. And I'll tell you, out of everybody there, the president had more stamina and more energy than just about anybody there. And that was plain as day to see. You don't need a doctor telling you that. The press corps was there. They were covering it. And it was was easy to people to see. And, And yet they're living in utter denial now of the doctor's medical report. On, uh, on President Trump. And, you know, he said one thing, and I just know this ticked them off. I'm not aware of any specific reporter having an insane reaction to this, but I know that a bunch of them did silently. At one point, the press was peppering the doctor with questions. How can any of this be? The guy eats all these Big Macs. He sits there on his bed in the residence and gorges on Big Macs and French fries and has all those Diet Cokes. And you know what Diet Coke does to you. No, I don't know what Diet Coke does. What does Diet Coke do? Well, you know what aspartame. No, I don't know. What does aspartame do to you? Well, you know. No, I don't. I don't subscribe to these namby-pamby left-wing crises health warnings that we get every other day. Oat brand's going to kill you one day, then it's going to constipate you the next day, then it's the best thing you can do the day after that. Coffee's going to kill you. Coffee's horrible. Next, coffee may lead to prevention of uh, Alzheimer's or or uh, something else. I mean, they go back and forth on all of these things. Remember butter and margarine and all of this stuff for the, They've made people so self-conscious about everything they eat and order that nobody has any fun doing it anymore, if you pay attention to them. I, of course, don't. And Trump doesn't eat it. But do you know why Trump eats McDonald's? But have you heard the explanation for it? Well, partially because he likes it, but he is... This is what makes this... uh, Trump dossier thing about hiring the prostitutes and all that in in Russia is so idiotic. Trump is a known germaphobe, number one. But number two, like all powerful people and wealthy people, he is surrounded by security people who over the years have warned him of the ways enemies could try to take you out. Poisoning your food, poisoning what you drink, um, in, in in having a you know corrupting a chef and having a chef put something in the food that's going to make you sick. Now some wealthy people take it to heart more than others. Some wealthy don't kid me if I'm some don't care about it. They look at the security guidelines as an obstacle. But Trump, the reason he goes to McDonald's besides the fact he likes it, is they don't know he's coming. There is no opportunity to poison the food he's going to get there. It would be true of any fast food place. Nobody knows he's coming. I'll tell you, when I first became curious about this, it was during the campaign. Trump's traveling around on his own plane. It's a Boeing 757. Now, you people have traveled on 757s. You know, they've got huge galleys. They're state-of-the-art galleys. And Trump's got staff, and he's got, I assume, press in the back of the plane. And whenever the press is anywhere near, you feed them. It's just, you would not believe at professional sports stadiums, the press rooms, where the media is fed prior to every game. Uh, it's, It's incredible, the spread that's put out for the media. Baseball parks, football parks, 
football stadiums, the press room opens two to three hours before the game. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's just a staple. You feed the press. So I see a still shot of Trump with a bag of McDonald's in front of him. And I'm saying, what the, what? the guy's got chef's galore. He's got a great galley. He can order anything he wants, catered to that airplane, prepared and delivered. And he's sitting there eating McDonald's. So that's when I first got curious and started asking myself why. And this is what I learned. Also, it's cheaper to feed the media if you're not importing a chef and catering a bunch of stuff. You know, give him a bunch of fast food and find a dandy. I don't know what he feeds the press on the, on the plane, in his own plane. I didn't know if he even was. I just know that it's standard operating procedure that when they're there, you feed them. It, it's one of the old standby staples. Feed the press, keep them on your side, keep them happy to the extent possible. I once, first time I toured Airhead Stadium in Kansas City, shortly after it had been built, and it was the beginning of a football season. Lamar Hunt, the owner, was hosting the local media and a tour of the press box, and I was stunned. And I'm just a young kid here. I've never been in a press box anywhere. And I'm, I'm stunned. I can't believe the luxury that I'm seeing. And they showed the press room, and I said, what's this? This is where the media eats prior to the game. And holy smokes. So I ran into Mr. Hunt, who I'd met for the first time that night. I said, I can't, I can't believe what you have here for the media. He said, we have to. Highly pampered. Highly pampered. Which I came to learn was SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Anyway, that, <clears throat> that is why Trump has McDonald's, primarily. He knows that it's going to be safe because there's no McDonald's restaurant that knows he's coming. They don't have time to poison anything. Now, you can, you can laugh and think that that's kind of crazy behavior. But in that world where all kinds of espionage takes place, it's probably – well, that's the point. That's why he would not call prostitutes and have them come in and urinate on a bed. And when he also – by the way – Trump is he there's a you talk about standard operating procedure. Trump as a matter of policy, his executives, his family, whenever they travel, the assumption is that every hotel room they stay in is bugged. Whether it is or not, that is the standard operating procedure, the assumption that it's bugged and behave, speak, act accordingly. Which means it's, it's another illustration of how it's folly that Trump would hire a bunch of prostitutes to come in and urinate. The whole idea is just, and none of it's been corroborated. Now, let me take a break here so we have some time on the other side. Sit tight. We will be back before you know it. And I also want to finish the point that I was making before I got sidetracked on Trump and his diet. The doctor, you know, the drive bys are going nuts. How can the guy be this healthy? They don't believe it. They think the doctor's making it up, that Trump has made him lie to them. And the doctor said, and this doctor is a crafty guy. This doctor said he's just got incredible genes. This is just how God made him. This doctor, I don't know, but I am suspecting that this doctor knew that asserting God inserting God into the equation of Trump's health would drive them crazy. Because remember, these are liberals. God? Shut up about God. That's, that's that crazy Christian stuff. They don't believe creation. They don't believe God. And certainly that God would choose some people to be healthier than others, that it's just genes. Trump lucked out with good genes. No, no, because these people, don't forget, they're liberals. They believe that only they are qualified to tell you how to live and how to behave in order to live a long life. They have all the answers. They're the ones that come up with these cockamamie diet schemes, things you should eat, shouldn't eat, that you need to get this much exercise, that you need to stay in this, this degree of fitness. 
And it's all rooted in their utopia. And in order for their utopia to ever happen, they have to be able to deny you freedom. They have to be able to control what you do, what you say, what you think, what you eat, what you don't eat. And that's how they get to their utopia, because you cannot be left alone. You cannot be trusted to do the right things with your money, with your life, with your kids. And so the doctor, you know, he's just got good genes. That's just how God made. No, no, no. I'll bet you I'm a, a thousand percent of all those reporters. No, no. God has nothing to do with it. It's all about doing the right things as defined and determined by progressives. And so I, I, I just know that when he inserted that notion that it was God, that it had to drive him nuts. Meeting and surpassing all audience expectations every day. Here behind the Golden EIB microphone, Rush Limbaugh, and to the phones, we go to Indianapolis. This is Chris, and I'm glad you called, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great, Rush. Thanks. You bet. Jump right into my, my observation or comment. You know, when, when I heard the question about hamburgers and uh, soft drinks and then Ronnie Jackson's response of genetics, I cringed. <laughs> and I cringed in a way that said, oh, man, they're going to turn that right back around on him because... You know, this falls right into, and, and you've taught me well. I've been listening to you since, I think, 87 in my dad's tool and die shop in New Jersey. Um, but this is a wide open door for them to say, oh, Hitler, genetics, right? White privilege. The whole thing can just dovetail off that. And I'm surprised we haven't heard it yet, to be honest. Yeah, that, uh, that, they, that they, may, they may stumble upon that. It, 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 it may take some idiot like Joy Reid or Joy Behar at uh, MSNBC or The View to come up with that. I mean, that's that's actually good thinking on your... I would have never, I would have never <laughs> even considered that until you brought it up. Well, I'm sure they're listening to you, and you'll probably hear it tomorrow. So, Okay, so walk me through this. You heard the yeah. doctor explain Trump's health by saying, hey, you know what? He, he was blessed with good genes. That's just the way God made him. And you immediately thought what? <laughs> I just thought, man, that the press is going to take that and they're going to turn it against them. They're going to say, well, you know, he's he's more privileged than somebody who doesn't have good genes. And uh, then they're going to then they're going to float it back to Hitler. And they're going to say, well, Hitler was very genetically focused. Right. And so you just look at all the ties they can make to that. So uh, hopefully we have. Well, what? No, no. Let's not wait. Let's just not skate past this. What ties could they make to this? Well, I mean, Hitler's I mean, they, a stretch. Can, Hitler did not have great genes. Hitler, well, Hitler was insane. <laughs> no, but but he had programs, I think, that focused on purifying the, the genetics of the population there. And so he has, it's not the first time he would have been, you know, a parallel drawn between Trump and Hitler, I think, by the media. So it, it's absolutely probable in my in my point of view. So you think... That they might take the fact that the doctor said, hey, he's got great genes. It's just the way God made him. And you're thinking that the media will say, and Trump knows this, and that's why Trump only wants people like him in the country, white people from Norway or Sweden or something like that. That's what you think is going to happen. It ties right back into Acosta yesterday. I hope they do. I hope look, the, 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 the loonier they go and the crazier they go with this kind of stuff. Are I you, put it you, past you really cringed? I mean, you're worried they could sell something like that? You know, I mean, cringe uh, inside of me. I just kind of jumped and went, oh, oh, boy. <laughs> you know, Hitler would not have liked Trump anyway. Orange hair was no, not. Was no, not. absolutely not. I mean, diametrically opposed. I mean, opposites. But, you know, doesn't stop the press. So I'll say this is fascinating. I'm, I'm so glad, Chris, that you got through here. I'm, I'm fascinated with the way people think. And you notice that he credited being a student here at the Limbaugh Institute for his ability to even ponder this potentiality. That good genes, that's just the way God made him. The media could hear that and turn that into a somehow racist or bigoted position that Trump 
Well, obviously, he's aware of it. He wants more people like him. He loves himself. He thinks he's the best. He thinks he's the smartest. And this is what Trump is really trying to engineer. They may get there. But as I say, if they do, it's going to take somebody on their side that's that literally uh, is being held together with chewing gum and, and peanut butter. I mean, they can be that loosely almost falling apart to come up with something like that. And it's entirely possible. I think that they've already gone through stage one, the stage one reaction. The doctor mentions God. Now, look at it. In this concept, our context, we're talking about essentially perfect health for a 71-year-old man that all these people hate. Perfect health. He does many things that they believe and have been taught that are not good to do for your health. They have been taught that you don't do a whole lot of things that Trump does. And he's in better health than some of the, those people. So here comes the doctor and assigns as one of the reasons to explain this, God. <sighs> that is a double insult. Trump being in perfect health for, did you see the heart rate numbers? Did you see the BP numbers? Did you see the cholesterol number? Perfect health. I mean, for a 71-year-old guy, perfect health. The only complaints that the doctor had was a little elevated cholesterol and not enough exercise, which a doctor would tell a marathon runner. It's, it's habit. Everybody, nobody gets enough exercise. So those are the, I mean, his, 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 uh, his fasting blood sugar is 89. Well, that means he is nowhere near type 2 diabetes. If you have a, the way they, I don't know how they administered with, with Trump, but they basically give you this super sweet, sickening stuff that you have to drink, and then they measure your blood sugar four hours later to get a... A, uh, a reading on how well you're you're handling uh, sugar, essentially, and anything under 105, you're good. 105 and up, and you're at the beginning of trouble. When you hit 150, 200, it's to the hospital. If you went at 400 or 600, uh oh, it's crisis time. Trump is at 89. It's perfectly. Normal. It can't get any better. Now, some people get to 89, but they have to fast for six or seven hours to do it. The, the test is a four-hour fast after consuming all that glucose. It's called the glucose tolerance test. Um, as a key man insurance policyholder, I have to take all these tests, which is why and how I know this stuff. So when I heard Trump's numbers, it was they were dazzling to me. I mean, they say he's got elevated cholesterol, but it's still 200. It's nothing. He's not taking any prescription meds other than something for that, Crest Roar or some such thing. Is that. It, the point of all this is, is the media getting all this, go into that room thinking that they're going to learn that he's on early onset Alzheimer's. Folks, they believe this stuff. Do not doubt me. They believe it, hope it, the combination of the two that ends up becoming their reality. Mm-hmm. Well, where, Snurdly is asking me, when did it become possible that somebody that looks like Trump could be categorized obese? I don't know. I'd have to wild guess it that that's when the AMA got hold of the tables and started reducing them down. Um, there's no way that, that Donald Trump is not obese. And even if they make him 6'2 instead of 6'3 and weighing 239, that is not obese. There's a big difference in obese and morbidly obese and overweight. And Trump, I mean, it's six and one half dozen, maybe overweight, but there is no way that Trump is obese. In any measure, unless you go by this new body mass index that the health fanatics have cooked up, 
And remember, so much of this is done. The more people on the verge of bad health or illness, the better for who? The better for people to make drugs, the better for doctors, the better for psychiatrists, the better for everybody. Why do you think we have a Monday holiday in February? The ski industry wanted it. So what do we call it? President's Day or some such thing. Here is Peter from either Rancho Moringa or Rancho Santo Margarita or Rancho Santa Manga. What I, it, it's Santa Maria. I, that's all I, it's Santa Maria. Is that where you're from? No, actually, it's Rancho Santa Fe, Rush. San, Rancho Santa Fe. Okay. Just outside of uh, San Diego. Yeah, yeah. I just, it, it says on my call board here, Santa M-A-R-I. So I was saying that could be anything. Santa Margarita, Santa, Santa Cucamonga, but not Well, come Santa. on. Anyway, here you are. This is my guest. You'll love the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably have seen it. Uh, uh, there have been a lot of pro tours there, but uh, listen, your perspicacity is on a sale. Uh, but I think I have one for you. Okay. Um, the press is again, in my opinion, been outsmarted and outmaneuvered by the president uh, by requesting the cognition test and scoring the perfect thirty for thirty. The president's mental state is no longer an issue. He preempted the press brilliantly. Imagine if this test had not been performed, and parenthetically, it has never been employed before in any other presidential physical exam. What would happen is the mainstream press would be doing nothing yesterday, today, every day for days in the future of saying, well, the president is healthy, but his mental state is still a question. That's now not an issue. Well, but and he not not he look, not entirely because the drive-bys are questioning the veracity of the test and the doctor reporting the results. There, well, and, and there's even a story. Yeah. Now, Peter, listen to this. Here's a story in the Washington Post. Trump's cognitive test was created by a Lebanese immigrant to Canada. The Washington Post that. thinks that that somehow disqualifies it because Trump hates now, immigrants. Right? Trump hates immigrants of color. I'd love I I uh, that test is unassailable. Well, you're talking about abject truth here, which the drive-bys don't accept. Uh, they can report whatever they want. This is the problem. You got the test thirty for thirty. He aced it. They make a big deal out of it. But I can I can point you to any number of of Yahoo News stories today, or or tech blogs, or wherever you want to go, where the focus of this is the doctor may have lied, or the test may not be all that good. That it was created by a Lebanese immigrant to Canada, and of course the the Post is trying to say, well, that that Trump can't rely on that. He hates immigrants. He hates immigrants in Lebanon. He hates the Middle East, and so they're trying to point out irony in this. Uh, Washington Post really thinks they have a killer point here. They think they've disqualified it because the creator of the test is a Lebanese immigrant to Canada, and Trump hates immigrants. And for all we know, he may hate Canada. And my point is that had he not done this, that is all we would be hearing about is his mental state is still a significant question. No, I hear you. He, uh, he totally outmaneuvered him. Well, in, in this, okay, you're right. He ran a perfect scam on him. He thought to include, in fact, the doctor even mentioned the fact that they don't normally do this cognitive test in presidential physicals. They just don't do it. And the, the doctor said, the only reason we did it is the president demanded that I do it. The president asked to take the cognitive test. And so he aced it. He got 30 out of 30. He is in perfect health. And the wind went out of the sails in the press room. But it's not going to stop them from questioning his mental fitness. It's not going to stop them from talking about the need for the 20. They're always going to be able to find a Harvard law professor or some doctor of shrinkology at some bogus, obscene 
out of the universe university to claim that Trump is exhibiting the signs of whatever. Or or yeah, you know, or somebody in the drive by media who's just who's just gonna rain all over the test and claim it's illegitimate that the doctor phonied it up because Trump demanded that he do so, and the doctor is a Trump fanboy, and so they're basically going to cast aspersions on the honesty and the integrity of everybody behind this physical. They're not going to let go of this stuff. I mean, you're right. Had Trump not done this, that's all they'd be talking about, but it isn't going to uh, stop them from doing so. Uh, I appreciate the call, though. Thanks very much. I'm glad you waited, too. I appreciate uh, your patience.